my best memories of the Gloucester Bath derby. The fights. It's not a West Country derby without a scrap, so here's our first. I'd be lying if I said it was just just another game. Ferocious, brittle, intense, just pure passion. It's the most hostile environment that I've played in in club rugby. A roar of delight! Yeah, it's cutthroat, if I'm completely honest. Well, it's an enormous fight, enormous fight. I don't think we've seen the end of the cards. You wake up in the morning and you think, what's on today? And you suddenly remember it's the bath game and your stomach starts turning over. Biggest game of the season. Literally nothing means more. It's just the game that means the most to me. It's one of the first ones to look for. It's nasty. Anything can happen. Horrible. Oh, it's horrible. It would always be on the back of your mind as a player that you knew that it was the biggest and the best game of the year. I think people know when it's when it's derby week that I'm a little bit extra, probably a bit too much in training. But we're the ones, the privileged 15, that get a chance to represent this city for one week against the local rivals. I think losing to Bath at King's Home is you tend to not want to go to the local supermarkets the week after. You definitely get an ear full. That was rubbish the weekend. You mean, yeah, I know. It's evening, not like the petrol station. You wouldn't get the usual greet with a smile or, you know, how you make your good as things. Yeah, all going well at the club. It would be a little bit more. Pump three, please. What went wrong at the weekend? I'm going to be like, ah, uh, can I just pay for my fuel? You almost lie to yourself if you don't play it for the enjoyment of the 14, 15,000 people that are in the stadium. And for me, you know that this one means the most to them. I have to get down to the shed to get my place on the halfway line. I come down an hour and a half before the kickoff. And then when Gloucester run past the shed and all the crowds chanting, Gloucester, Gloucester. It still makes the hair stand up on the back of my neck and I've been coming down here for 68 years. Those are the people that really bring it to life so that when you do come into a team, either Bath or Gloucester, and you could be from the other side of the world, you still buy into what that derby game actually means to the clubs and to the, the people in the cities. Earliest memories probably got to be the big, the big fight. I think we were challenging for the top four in a home semi-final that year, and obviously they were trying to upset the party. Yeah, outside my season ticket seat was just one. Well, F, yeah, yeah, forty-nine. Yeah, it's down the right-hand corner. I can't remember the date of the game. 2014. I remember it vividly because I was captain of the day, and I was like, right, I need to get a hold of this. Edmonds yellow, Tyndall yellow, Puafisi red. Gloucester in absolute mayhem. One of the cards was a late tackle on Nick Abendelin, flying clothesline as well. They had a little Welsh come off at the time, he started a bit of a scuffle. Tavis Noyle's antics, that's tied into one of the funniest moments of a derby. We had the remit that week was if it kicked off, it was sort of everyone ran in and then he took it a little bit too far. A number of a big forward on a number nine, uh, and Tavis is having none of it, uh, he just let rip. Well, it's an enormous fight, enormous fight. All started by Tavis Noyle there. I just remember Tavis swinging about four punches and then Nick and and running over front and throwing a few. We have a leadership group and in, in that meeting early in the week we talked about setting the precedent for the week, what we we're going to do and Neil Hatley asked Nick Abendon who's prepared to talk to the team about how much the derby means and Nick pretty squarely was like, well, to be honest mate, it's more about the fans, like, we're professionals now. Q, six days later, 75 minutes gone on the clock, big windmill right over the top. Missing the Gloucester and punching Leroy Houston square in the face and Leroy getting off the floor, realising that he's got a, a big cut across his face, but it's from his own player. I tried to run over and hit George Fawkes, because he's the smallest guy on the pitch. I was more of a steward in that fight. Charlie was underneath everybody else's arms, so you don't know what, where he was. He's, he's probably punching people in the midriff or in the kidneys. Just crowd control on the fringes than actually being in the heat of it. <laughs> yeah, it was carnage. Walking around the pitch after trying to be polite and you know, thanking the fans for their noise during the game, and we got some answers as we walked around the pitch. I actually got a pint of cider poured on my head from, from one of the Gloucester fans, and I remember at the end, Carl Ferns giving the shed the V's walking past. That was a pretty dark moment in the changing room, losing at home to your bitter rivalries, but at least some of the fans are like, well, at least you whacked him. That's the main thing. <laughs> but that's, that's sometimes what rivalries are about. So there we are on the bus, just thought that it was over, and I think we pulled up outside of the pub, and... Uh, <laughs> There was a few exchanges of, of words, should we say, or the things were thrown at us. Pie and chips all over the windows and, and pints being thrown and obviously uh, a, a little bit of bad blood. We probably celebrated a little bit 
overzealously, maybe, is a, is a correct way to say. These moments are very real. None of that's ever prescribed. Like, you don't want to go out and celebrate in front of the shed, but it was Bath v Gloucester, and the build-up was massive. The expectation from our city was massive, so to get the win was, was a huge relief and a, a very, very enjoyable moment. I remember playing against Gloucester at King's Home and walking past my good mate Andy Hazel. Non derby day, he'd say, oh, Hi, Hayes, how are you going? An hour and a half before kickoff, blank me, walked straight past. I had no interest in speaking to them. Anyone, it was just, I couldn't speak to them, I just couldn't let myself go. First breakdowns of the game, I went to clear over and Hazy came steaming in with a level of ferocity that was, it really set the tone for the game. A lot of people thought I was rude, but then after the game, I'd always make sure I'd go up to someone and apologise and then say, You want a drink? He did not buy me a beer, no, he didn't drink the squirrel, he's a tipper. Hazy always tips his pints, he pops the loo and tips his pint out and comes back. It's just business, if you like. Rugby's pretty special when it comes to relationships between fans. You can beat Gloucester as a fan. That's you. You can smile whatever happens in the season. It's a lot better once you've got the bragging rights. You can have bad friends then. A couple of friends are all season ticket holders, so it's good to put a little message on a Monday morning, like, so uh, how's the bath going on the, on the weekend? Like? <laughs> yeah, we've got no mates from Bath anymore. No, not one. No friends or family. If I've got any family members who are bar fans, they better come out and let me know, but I don't know any. <laughs> so if, if there is any, and I will cut ties, I will. I'm living in Gloucester at the moment, oh, no. which is, oh, tense. Wearing this around Gloucester is not a good look. It's a rivalry, but there's very much on the pitch. It's not, it's not off the pitch. Through the years, there was always one or two people on their team where you know it was going to spark up. And I have a period in my career where I remember playing against Jim Hamilton when he was at Gloucester and it, it never was anything other than a good scrap during the game. He would wind me up constantly, I would try and do the same to him. Always tough battles, but that physical element, it was old school back then and I absolutely loved it. My memories of the games against Gloucester were always hugely physical, pushing the boundaries of what's legal in a game of rugby, but always, you know, having a beer together afterwards. <laughs> It's always a joke. He's all right for a Gloucester fan. He's all right for a Gloucester fan. It means everything to me and my family to come away victorious and have bragging rights and to be able to hold it over their heads for the foreseeable future. It's the biggest game of the year as far as I'm concerned. If I could sum up the derby in one sentence. Far more emotional than you expect. Deep-rooted tradition. A great contest between two rugby-mad cities whose fans are fanatics. You want to beat your closest rival, don't you? I think it's two neighbours just trying to absolutely destroy each other. It doesn't get much better than that. It is one of those games, no matter what is happening in the season, you know, top of the table, middle of the table, bottom of the table, Bath Gloucester is Bath Gloucester. As a local lad, it means everything, you know, it's the big fixture of the year that you want to play in, that you want to win, and you want to win well. Passion, it's definitely, from the fans, from the players, from everyone involved. You can see what it means to this part of the country. It's the old saying, you can lose every game of the season as long as you beat Bath. <laughs> when you're fortunate enough to put on the blue, black and white or the cherry and white hoops, you know, the derby game is, is a truly special moment.